ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Respected brothers and sisters in Islam or viewers of Imam Sharif and Fandan and I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope that everyone is doing well. All thanks and praise are due to Allah. Bear witness that He is the only one with no associate. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and messenger of Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu o you who believe fear Allah, the way he should be feared and never die unless in the state of Islam. He says again, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul he created for him his partner, and from the twain he created for them their offspring. So fear your Lord from who you are taking your sustenance, and fear the womb that bore you because Allah is watching over you. In the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we read that the best of ways is the Al-Quran, which, which is the words of Allah, and the best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Warning us strictly to follow the two sources of Al Islam, which is the Quran and the Sunnah, which is the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad. And with these two, we will have our straight path be maintained and we will end in the hereafter paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our topic today is about the point of looking for peace in all aspects of life. What we have to understand is that peace is a very important word and the situation of peace is very very important to Allah. So Allah has uh, taken the word peace to be an attribute of His. We say Allah is Salam. Salam means peace. And from peace we have Islam meaning that to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Islam come from the word salam which is peace in all aspects of life Allah would want mankind to live in peace and harmony so that you don't hurt anyone and you will not also be hurt so Allah has made oppression forbidden and he says inni haramtu zulma ala nafsi وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا I, Allah, have forbidden unto myself oppression. And I have made oppression forbidden among you. So do not oppress anyone. Do not cheat anyone. Do not offend anyone. And in the sense that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu we read, لَا ضَرَرْ وَلَا ضِرَارْ you don't harm, neither should be you be harmed. So peace is very, very important. But peace cannot come unless with justice. When you have two people fighting, fighting or they have misunderstanding, it's up to you that you should try to settle between them and make them to live in peace and harmony. But if you don't use justice, in the settlement they may accept you or agree with you but still yet they would not be living in peace and harmony it can never work that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that one when you have two people within the believers fighting you should settle between them and if even one tried to refuse a settlement, try to uh, not force, but try to encourage him, try to bring him to a settlement. And if he agreed to the settlement, then Allah mentioned the word of justice. Settle among them in a way that is just. And if you do so, then you will have uh, a good answer. In so many cases within the society, especially in our third world country, when we have problem between the elder and the younger, be it between an elderly person and the younger one, or be it between two brothers, the elder and the younger, 
or be it between the father and mother, whatever the situation is, the first thing we do is to make sure that the younger or the less privileged accept the settlement against his favor, against himself. So we say, try to seek uh, forgiveness from your elder brother because the elder never does mistake. So you would find that every time you would want to go and settle between them again because you have cheated him and this is what Anna doesn't want. No matter how the situation is, make sure justice is done. Let's see the, uh, the difference between justice using a just way of settling a problem and forcing peace to actually do exist. Let's try to have a story which we may have already treated this story before, but bringing it up in this lesson may help us to understand what I'm trying to draw our minds to. In the days of uh, in the days of uh, the prophet David, that's Dawood alayhi salam, Allah made him a prophet and at the same time uh, a king. As we all know, we call him King David, as it's been known. So what happens is that he's a prophet, that is Allah had anointed him as a prophet and being a king he has to deal with the people's day-to-day -day life and activities so it means he'll be doing his prophecy work that is always with him and during his spare time or a time that he has appointed himself he had to go and sit down and settle between people when there are any problems he has to settle between them then it happened that two ladies had a problem the problem was that they both of them had a child each let's say a baby and in those days as they were living of course let's say uh, it was a situation that could happen uh, it happened that wolf a wolf killed one of the children killed one of the children belonging to one of the ladies then the other surviving child is now alone meaning is the only child that is alive the other one was killed by the wolf and both ladies claim ownership of that baby this one said no it's your baby that was killed that one said no it's mine that is alive and so on so it happened that they sent the problem to the court and the court the judge there was king solomon himself the prophet sorry king david himself the prophet so when they brought the case to him he said he asked them whose child is this immediately one of the ladies started to explain and then crying wailing this is my child is my only child that i have that child that was killed was not mine and so on she was complaining a lot and then crying at the same time so at the end and then he asked the other lady whose child is that she said the child belonged to me without even crying or even saying a word apart from that is my child he said okay due to the emotions that are the the, the, the the sort of character the first lady showed then he ruled in her favor because the child belonged to her the child now who is what uh, a living child belonged to her but the dead child is not hers so he ruled in favor of that lady and the case was closed so they were supposed to leave the palace but at the gate they met a young boy the young boy asked the guards who were escorting the ladies out what did my father judge in this case and who was that boy that boy at the time was about 12 years old and that was the son of king david and he was the one who inherited his father and became king solomon so he asked them then they said oh your father ruled in favor of this lady and she has taken the child then he said if it was i i would have ruled in a different way but not the way my father ruled so they went and informed his father asking david your son is saying this then he said bring him he came what are you saying son he said father if you should give me the possibility of ruling between these two i would rule in a different way 
Then he said, okay, now I have given you the permission. He said, okay. He asked the ladies, whose child is this? Then that lady started shouting and wailing and so on as she did in the first time. Then he asked the other lady, whose child is this? She said, she belongs to me. Then he said, okay. He asked those who were on, on, around, bring me a sword or a knife. They brought a knife and then he said, give me the child. Then they asked him, what are you going to do? He said, you see, in a case like this, the two actually are claiming ownership. So you have to be just between them. You divide the child into two, give half to the wailing woman and give half to the silent woman. At that time, the wedding woman didn't say a word. I'm going to kill your child, divide the child into two, give half to you and half to the other lady. She didn't say a word. Then the other lady who, who said, oh, the child belonged to me, then immediately inter intervened and said, no, don't kill the child. Give the child to this woman. Then King Solomon said, then the child belonged to you. Why? You see, he used justice in the rule and they realized peace. What does that mean? The wailing woman, she knew very well that the dead child belonged to her, but she was trying to claim ownership of the living child. And the other lady had nothing to say except that the child belonged to me because she knew the child belonged to her. Then the medicine was that at the times King Solomon wanted to divide the child into two because the child doesn't belong to her she doesn't care if this child also dies because that one had already the other child had already died who belonged to her but if this one should be killed it means that they will now be drawn so she didn't say anything but that other lady silently who said the child belonged to me said no give the child to her it means the child belonged to me I know very well I cannot see my child being killed but if even you give the child to someone but not me I know my child is still alive so King David being the father of King Solomon accepted the judgment of his son King Solomon and that made the child to survive and that made justice to come and peace was realized you see when you judge justly between people you see the oppressor at the end of the judgment will never never feel bad because he knows justice has been done and when you do something right the hand of Allah is in but if you if you, you force someone to accept a judgment that is not right then you will never find peace you cannot have peace without justice let's take a second story and then with this we will have a conclusion the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his days, they were living with the Jews, Muslims and Jews living together. He didn't oppress anyone. There was this man, a Jew, who had a farm. And by the farm, there was this Muslim who also had another land. So the land was actually close to each other. The land of the Muslim and the land of the Jew. It happened that the Muslim took advantage of his tribe as an Arab and his religion as a Muslim to collect some part of the land that belonged to the Jew. The Jew complained and he also said, no, the land belonged to me. He said, no, this land belonged to me. The argument came, then they agreed that they should go for a settlement. The settlement, they have to have an elderly person. And I said that was this when the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was alive then they said who should we go to for judgment because the Jews had rabbi okay who actually deals with their situation and the Muslims had the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his days the Muslims said let's go to your rabbi then the Jews said no let's go to your prophet you know why because a rabbi he takes bribe the Muslim feels that he can bribe the rabbi so that he will rule in his favor. But the Jew knew very well that the prophet rules justly. So he said, no, let's go to Muhammad. Finally, they went to the prophet Muhammad for judgment. 
Then he listened to the two of them. Then after making investigations, he realized that the land belonged to the Jew. He didn't say because he is my brother, an Arab, or he is my brother, a Muslim. No. Allah says, when you rule, rule justly. So he ruled in favor of the Jew. Then the land was given to the Jew. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the same way we have to settle all our grievances, be it small or big. Do not support evil. Do not support uh, transgression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want that. That is why the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they were supposed to enter Mecca at a time when there was agreement between them and the idolaters of Mecca, who said you will not come into Mecca for a period of 10 years, but there was an agreement. If the agreement is broken, then of course you can decide to come in or if you break the uh, agreement on our, on, on, on our side, we have right to do anything to you. The Prophet accepted this 10 years issue. The Sahaba or the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't know why he should accept 10 years. He told them that no, it's an agreement, let's hold or let's keep the agreement. But finally, the agreement was broken because the idolaters broke the agreement by attacking or in any case, uh, if I want to go into it, it should be a long, uh, uh, a long lesson. In any case, they broke the agreement and the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, an agreement is an agreement. If you break it, you have to pay. So that made the Muslims to go into Mecca and settle as we all know uh, to be the situation. Why I brought all this up is that brothers, sisters in Islam, in all our dealings, no matter how the situation is, whether the situation is small or big, make sure you are always with those who are right. Allah says, Ya you are the man who took Allah or Kunuma of Sadiqin, or you who believe fear Allah and be with the people of truth, be with the people who are just. Don't follow people just because of a relationship you have in this world or some benefit you would have in this world or whatever gains that you may gain from the individual if he is wrong. Make sure you are always on the right side. Be with the people of truth. And with that, you can always live in this world in peace and harmony. And remember, within the big sins or major sins that one can commit, that is very serious before Allah, is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Shahada to Zoh, false witnessing. Don't be a false person. Follow people because they are your people. Follow them because they belong to your tribe. Follow them because they belong to your I mean, your 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 uh, uh, yes, your, 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 your nation your nation because you come from the same color because you come from the same country because you are Muslims together. When a Muslim is wrong and then he uh, had to he is cheating the the, the, the non-Muslim or is cheating a Christian, make sure that you fight justice inshallah for the one who is right. Be he a Christian or a Muslim or whatever he belongs or he believes in because you are going to witness before Allah on the day of judgment remember whatever you witness in this world you will also witness on that on the day of judgment and with that I've come to the completion of my today's lesson whatever I've said that is right from Allah and whatever I've said that is right is from you from Satan may Allah forgive us all may Allah purify our hearts may Allah make us to know the just way of dealing with uh, with things and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize after justice what is known as peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also forgive our parents, our brothers and sisters, all those who have taken good care of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive in their sins and make their great space of paradise. And may Allah reward them Jannah. And we also, when our time comes, may Allah take us in a way while He is more pleased with us. Our wives, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them greatly for whatever they do in order to take care of us and our children. Our children, may Allah make them more better than us. Those who are going astray, may Allah return them to the right track. May Allah guide them and may Allah guide all children away from the evil of today. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide each and every one of us. Those who are seeking to marry, may Allah give them good spouses. Those who are marrying, they are seeking children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them good children. And those who have children, they are seeking for more, may Allah give them more. And those who are having problems, be it in their personal life or in where they are in their family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secure their problems. 
Those who are from this in taking care of their children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Those who are sick, may Allah cure them, and those who die, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them uh, be forgiven of their sins and reward them. Paradise, and with this I say, Subhanakallahu wa bihamdi, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa anta, Astaghfiruka wa tuhulik, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.